Okay, so let's take a look at how to do this question here where we have to determine the confidence interval to a specific percentage, in this case 87%, for a given set of statistical values. So let's just understand what we're looking at here first. So I'm just going to draw a quick sketch of the standard normal curve. So this is a symmetrical distribution. Um, the middle of the curve is the, has the z-score of zero, or what we can say is also the population mean. Okay, and also remember, um, when we are looking at this, this curve here, this also is where the z-score is equal to zero. So it's positive to one side and then negative to the other side. But we're looking at an 87% confidence interval. So what we need to understand is, if you remember, um, under a standard normal curve, the area of the curve represents 100%. That means we can have 100% of all outcomes, um, to, um, which are represented by values to the left and to the right of that population mean. But if we're looking at an 87% confidence interval, we're only going to take away 87% of it. That leaves us with 13% that is effectively outside the area of where what we believe those values to be true. Now the thing is, where do we take that 13%? Do we take it off the top or do we take it off the bottom? Because the curve is symmetrical, um, we can't we split that into the middle. Okay, so that's what that alpha divided by two value means. So alpha is just represents our area, and then we take 13 and we divide that by two, which gives us six and a half percent. So that means on either side of the curve, so I'm just gonna mark it here a little bit to the right side and then a little bit to the left side. This part that I'm shading in here represents six and a half percent of the error or the part where we could not say for sure with uh, that degree of confidence that if we had a value that, that um, showed up in that in either of those regions, we couldn't be sure that with 87% that that would represent part of that, um, that, that range of, of numbers. Okay, so that's what that 6.75% is. So what we have to do is we have to be able to figure out um, at some point what is our z-score values here. So this is going to be our plus z and this is going to be our minus z. Okay, and then that's at the 6.5% interval. Now remember, the curve, the area of the curve essentially starts at 0 here, and it goes to 100% here. Okay, so this is really 6.5% from 0. But on the other side, that little chunk represents 6.5%, but that's actually um, going to be 100% minus that, that 6.5 in order to calculate that z-score. But I'll, I'll show that part a little bit later. So then we have that formula, the interval formula, which is the one that was shown in the video. So that's where we take our, our uh, sample mean, which is x-bar, and we are going to create an interval, a plus or minus interval around it which represents that 87%. So the way that you, you do that is we take our value, which in this case would be 81, and then we are going to subtract from it this product, which is the z-score of alpha divided by 2 times the standard deviation all over the square root of n. And then we have our population mean, which is our middle value, um, and then we're going to bracket it by taking the sample mean and adding essentially the exact same number um, to the other side of it. Okay, just like that. So this gives us um, our interval of values. So all we have to do is plug our numbers in. But the only one that we don't really know is we don't know what this z-score of alpha divided by 2 is. We know what alpha divided by 2 is 6.5%, but we don't know the z-score. So to do that, you need to go to your TI calculator, and you need to use that inverse norm function, which basically takes the area that you are, are looking to calculate, or the probability, which is in this case 0 0.065, and it turns it into the equivalent z-score, which we would find on the horizontal axis on that curve. So for the 6.5%, our z-score is going to be negative 1.5141, okay? So that's the lower band for, for that negative z-value there. Now, 
it, because the curve is symmetrical, we can just use the same value for the upper band. But if you wanted to calculate the upper band of it, okay, we would have to take the same function, but we would use essentially 100 minus 6.5%. So 100 minus 6 is 94, and then take off the 0.5, which is 93.5%. So as a decimal, um, we are calculating uh, 0.935. Okay, and that will actually give us the positive Z score, but it'll be the same number. So we don't really have to worry too much about it. All you have to remember is that we're subtracting on one side and adding on the other, and we're just using the size of that number for the Z score. But if you wanted to calculate both, that's that. those are the two values that you would have there. Okay, so 6%, six, six percent, six and a half percent from zero is the first part, that's the negative number. And then all the way up to 93 and a half percent, which leaves that six and a half percent on the other side, would give us a positive 1.514. So to do the interval is just simply plugging in the values now. So we know we have 81 minus um, our Z score here, which is going to be 1.5141 times our standard deviation of 5 all over the square root of our sample size, which is 150. So we'll have to convert that into a number. Okay, we're going to do our inequality and then our sample, oops, our other side is going to be the exact same calculation, except instead of subtracting, we just add their values to it. Okay, and that is going to be 150. Okay, so you just need to put that into your calculator. Now, because we're using these statistical functions, usually they're calculated to four decimal spots. So this would just give me 81 minus 0.6181. You just want to keep as many digits in the calculator as you can before you get the final answer. And this is going to be the exact same number on the other side. Um, you just have to verify that. And then when you do your subtraction, we're going to get 80.3819 is the lower bound. And the upper bound is going to be 81.6181. That is going to be our... Um, interval there. So just remember, this is our range of values that represents where 87% of, of the, uh, basically any number in that value, in that range, we are 87% confident that it is captured by that, um, by that mean, that population mean in, in terms of the value there. Okay, so this is the 87% confidence interval. Okay, if we wanted a greater confidence interval, like say 95%, um, what we have to do is we will either expand the range, so the range gets bigger, or, or potentially we can increase the number of the sample size, okay, or do a few other statistical um, ideas in order to increase that, that confidence level. So these numbers are, can vary depending on what the question is asking. All right, so that's how you do this question.